I also got the chance to put everything into perspective when it comes to neoadjuvant immunotherapy and MMR deficient colon cancers. We're seeing uh, that there's a lot of data emerging and there's a lot happening in the field, especially this year. We've seen that at ASCO, we've seen that at ESMO, and there's um, the, the trials are very heterogeneous, uh, making it somewhat difficult to compare in terms of how much treatment do you need, how many uh, do you need combination treatment, etc. But what we do see across all of these trials is that neoadjuvant immunotherapy is highly effective in patients with MMR deficient colon cancers and that patients have a very high rate of pathologic complete responses in all of these studies. There is still some things that we need to figure out in terms of how much to, do you need to treat um, do you need to treat co with combination treatment um, and I tried to put that a, a bit into perspective um, and I think a couple of thoughts that are important to take away um, one of them being that in my opinion, um, it depends on what you're trying to achieve. Um, do you want to achieve a PCR for organ preservation when we are able to do so? Then you might need longer treatment, combination treatment. Um, but if you want to achieve better outcomes, um, we don't know the long-term outcomes of anti-PD-1 monotherapy at this time. The only study that has shown long-term outcomes in relation to pathologic responses and neoadjuvant immunotherapy has been the niche study that was presented at ESMO uh, this year showing a fantastic disease-free recurrence of 100 um, percent. So I think there's there's a lot to be learned still from many of these trials but in general I think the key takeaways are that immunotherapy works in MMR deficient colon cancers. It's not yet a standard of care and one of the questions that I was challenged to answer is do we think it's ready for standard of care for implementation um, based on the data that we presented here? I, yes I do believe it is ready. Um, there are some hurdles that we need to overcome, uh, but I do think that within the community of uh, the oncology community, considering these data, considering that the pathologic complete responses are uh, very uh, similar across of the, all of these studies and the DFS data, I do think we are ready. You know, this is, we need regulators to think in a different way um, of uh, than, rather than only uh, randomized controlled trials when we see this extreme efficacy. Um, so is it ready for standard of care? Yes. Um, and I really hope that we will be able to implement that. But that is something that we are pursuing, that we are trying and uh, hoping that we can achieve it.